By now, terrorist threats were appearing once again in the ranks of the far right. Although the far left threat had largely disappeared, there was a growing menace from offshoots of extreme right-wing groups like the British National Party, the BNP. There were still some small organisations, and particularly fascist organisations still continued, uh, you know, that would have been uh, still anxious to um, subvert the state if they could. There certainly seem to be a growing number of racial attacks and the excuse for those racial attacks was quite clearly that this is what the BNP would support and so we had that growing at quite a considerable pace on the one hand. Then we had breakaway groups in the British National Party, particularly Combat 18. Combat 18 was set up by the BNP a hand-picked unit of heavies to protect its members in confrontations with the left. It was called Combat 18 because the figures 1 and 8 refer to the first and eighth letters of the alphabet, A and H, the initials of one Adolf Hitler. There was a certain level of threat from that area, yes, and it was, it was certainly looked at. An action taken upon? Appropriate action would have been taken. That usually meant recruiting more spies. The Combat 18 organisation was quite open that uh, they wanted to um, engage in violent acts and, uh, and they regularly published some quite um, um, nasty magazines targeting left-wing opponents, members of ethnic communities and um, gays. So, you know, they were an organisation that uh, really needed to be looked at fairly closely. But Combat 18 was on the lookout too. By the mid-90s, its suspected special branch agents might be close. We had people reporting to us on Combat 18 for several years. But those agents would have been running serious personal risks given the nature of the people they were working with. Absolutely. Combat 18 also established links with the far right in Europe. They were equally unlovely. Aided by European fascists, Combat 18 planned a violent campaign. It was um, around about Christmas 95, received information um, that um, a, an attack was going to be made against the UK mainland by right-wing extremists, um, probably from Scandinavia, acting on behalf of uh, um, Combat 18 in United Kingdom. How did you get the information? Um, from a source. What was the name you were given by your source? The name we were given was Thomas. This is Thomas, surname Nakaba. He doesn't like the media. Then discussions started with our colleagues in Denmark. They knew who he was? They knew him very well, yeah. He's well known in Denmark. Special Branch heard of names on a Combat 18 hit list and picked up details of a plan. Letter bombs were to be made in Denmark, taken by ferry to Sweden and posted from there. A surveillance team followed the bombers and watched them post their deadly packages. At the post box there was, I think, three jiffy bags containing video cassette cases which were made up as uh, postal devices. Uh, fairly crude. Were they designed to kill? They were designed to kill. There's no two ways about that. The damage that those things caused when they were detonated, they were massive explosions. One of Combat 18's targets was the Olympic athlete Sharon Davis. Why Sharon Davis? Uh, because she had married a black athlete. Un you can't understand it, the mentality. You just cannot understand it. And what was the quality of the agent that enabled you to stop these attacks? Well, obviously, you know, to be able to preempt an attack like that, they were absolutely first class. So was the group destroyed from within? Um, yeah, it, it's, the seeds of destruction were sown there, yes. 
it then declined from there onwards. Knowing that the operation that we had against the extreme right saved people's lives, th there's no greater reward that I can have. But although the secret state had the far right extensively penetrated, the coverage was not broad enough. It failed to prevent three murderous attacks in London by the so-called nail bomber, David Copeland. It's a thought that's haunted me ever since. The Copeland affair. I feel that if I'd have been round at that time and operating in East London, I would have known after bomb one. You think you could have fingered him? Given the fact that um, he's been featured with the ex-leader of the BNP at prominent meetings and rallies and so on, I would have known who he was. The cost of people being able to go around this country freely and uh, without fear of injury is that you have eternal vigilance.